darkness tries to roll over my bones The sorrow comes to steal the joy I know When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken
So I did all the housekeeping and then I didn't invite or I didn't introduce myself and my husband Mark. So I'm Linda Ron and this is my husband Mark. <laughs> And about, um, we're kind of a little fuzzy on the timeline, but I believe it was in 2012 where we first met, or I first met, Robbie. How many here have seen the Father of Lights movie? Okay, so some of you have, some of you have not. I've got a little clip that we'll play in just a minute. But um, I had just seen this movie. It's a documentary of, of just amazing things that God was doing around the world. And Ravi was in this movie, and it, it, it just rocked me. I was like, wow, Lord, we just don't know. There's just so much about you that we don't know that's happening in the world that we need to know about. And then I find out he's coming to Minnesota in 2012, in Lesueur, Minnesota. And so I went there and, and met him. And um, there's a story behind that that I will tell Saturday night. <laughs> Um, it's an amazing testimony of, of the goodness of the Lord then and how it has continued until today. But the Lord reconnected us um, last year, um, around August, and I ended up going on a mission trip that just birthed this. That birthed this. This, this is the Lord's. This, is not, this wasn't a good idea, right? We, <laughs> we were actually thinking about retiring. <laughs> inside the church to the Lord has now called us to work outside of the church and uh, Robbie lives in Atlanta he was living in Arkansas at the time and I said are you coming to Minnesota yeah I'll come to Minnesota but he didn't the Lord didn't know the Lord knew but he didn't know it was gonna be within a year but at least it's not January right Robbie <laughs> he's cold I had to get him a sweater he's still cold now but um I want to play this little clip. It's a five-minute clip. It'll give you just, I want you to know this man's heart. His heart is sold out to Jesus, pure and simple. Now, he's not a saint. Oh, well, yes, he is, because we're all saints, right? Those of us who have received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we're, we are now saints. Um, we still sin, but, but, you know, but his heart is, is, and I've caught it, is whatever you say, Lord, because you say so. Whatever it is that you want, the answer is yes and amen. And and he just he he has a sensitive ear, and you'll you'll hear. So just watch this video for a minute. Can we hit the light, Sarah? Thank you. Hello, everybody. This is uh, Ravi Kandal. I'm about to. I'm about to introduce my good friends who are going to tell their story that rocked their life. A system that God gave me. Meet Ravi. In my travels around the world, I get to see many wonderful things and meet many amazing people. But few come close to the sheer unbelievability of my friend, Ravi. Anyone doubting that God still speaks to his children today and that he wants to be intimately involved in our lives need only spend a little time with this loving, humble man. Ravi has an incredibly unique gift from God, whom he calls Daddy. Ravi, you see, hears the audible voice of God every day. When Ravi was 17 years old, his life was a mess and he was about to kill himself when God spoke to him, audibly, and revealed himself to Ravi. So ever since then, for 20 years, God wakes Ravi up at 4 a.m. and gives him his marching orders for the day. I had tried to film with him for my second movie, Furious Love, but when Ravi asked him if he could, God said, not yet. So when God woke him up one day and told him it was, quote, time to film with Darren, let's just say it was a banner day for me and my team. The idea was simple, yet slightly terrifying. We fly out to India to meet with Ravi. He'll ask God what we should do, and then we'll do whatever God says. Seeing as God has been known to give Ravi GPS turn-by-turn -turn directions to remote villages, 
My team and I were more than a little excited about what we were about to experience. But honestly, we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. As we were walking towards where God told him a village was, Ravi told me the Lord had shown him a small bridge with a water pump nearby. And when we saw that, we were close. We turned a corner and there it was. I wish, you know, the God would have told me um, more specifics on this village. Ravi went right into the center of the village and began preaching. While this was going on, a bunch of men showed up from the nearby Hindu temple. We couldn't help but notice the machetes in their hands. We were in the middle of nowhere, preaching a forbidden Jesus to machete-wielding Hindus, and they didn't seem too happy with us. I didn't know whether to keep filming or run. Of all the men, one in particular, that man on the left there, seemed quite interested in what Ravi had to say. He listened intently as Ravi talked about his daddy, the God of the Bible. When Ravi asked if anyone wanted to accept this God as their own, this man revealed his heart immediately. <laughs> Soon after, Ravi prayed for the man, and it was only after this that we found out who this guy actually was. Every five years, there's a major festival held at the local temple, the same temple that our machete friends had just come from. This man, in this village, by this water pump, was the man in charge of that festival. Over 10,000 people show up at this festival, and it just so happened that it was to take place in two months' time. But of course, now the man in charge had just encountered the father, and, well, that changes a few things. Um, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Oh, he's saying, well, it's such a... Yeah, he's he learns, he learns, he learns, he learns, he learns. Oh, he's saying, there's a peace in right here. Ravi just brought the light of the Father to this man, and now that light will come upon thousands more. This was a simple taste of mind-boggling events yet to come. These kinds of events are commonplace for Ravi because he understands who his daddy is, that he is a loving, trustworthy father who actually desires friendship with us. That's a far cry from what a lot of others believe about him. Amen. And that's just a small snippet of that amazing movie. So I've, I've got it at the registration table if you just want to see what it is, because it is worth the purchase. It used to be on Netflix, but I don't think it is anymore. I just wanted to make a mention, if you noticed... Um, Ravi's face is blurred out in that movie. Ravi has paid a price for his faith. Um, when he was, before he knew Jesus, he um, was, was involved with the drug cartel, right, Ravi? That's, and so when he turned to the Lord and went and repented and went to the police with everything, that did not make them happy. And so um, he's had multiple death threats and has gotten beaten. So at the time of that movie, just for his own safety, they blurred his face out. So just so you know, because I know that's a question that comes up. So. Uh, before I have Ravi come up, I just want to share with you on my um, my experience or whatever. I'm a definitely a work in progress. Uh, some of you out there know me. I was not with Linda the last time he came here. Probably wasn't with Linda on a lot of aspects. So this is all new to me. Um, she got invited over to London 
we listened to a tape that he was inviting her with and some of this stuff. And uh, right away, I just told Linda to go. She needs to go. Some of you know me that I figure out people. I, I sit back and I, I'm not going to open up until I know what I'm dealing with here. I'm more of an observer. Yes, Susan, I'm a more observer. Than you. <laughs> until, until I get to know you, but whatever. But it was really neat. Linda said, now, now take one of his teachings, uh, you know, and so we, we did a phone message, and what was really got me right off the bat, he wasn't trying to sell me nothing, trying to make any money. We had it scheduled on a Saturday, and he calls me on a Thursday, and he says, I haven't been praying about this mark at all. We're not going to do this on Saturday. Can you do it in two weeks? Because I need to pray pray about you and we're you know get this serious so he he sold me right on that right off the bat and talked to me and it, it hits hits your soul it's things he talked to me it was uh a, definitely a god moment things that sh only i know about myself it's uh so again uh he, he he does it again from the heart uh not trying to make money it's it's uh He's trying to get you on, on the path of God and learn uh, more about uh, Jesus Christ. So, Ravi, are you here? <laughs> I'm, I'm out of breath here. <laughs> Mark is... Uh... If he would have chosen another career, he would have chosen stand-up comedy. <laughs> he so does not know his real calling is. <laughs> you might see him next day, uh, next next season that he is going to be. Um, but I'm so glad. I'm happy. Uh, I'm so proud of y'all to be here. Uh, seriously, uh, in this winter. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe Mark is standing out there with the shots. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I'm bundled up for, uh, for no reason, but I'm still bundled up. Uh, but I'm glad. I'm glad. I want to, I wanna, uh, I wanna, before we go further, it just, it's in the, uh, I want to introduce my, my dear, my dear team. Uh, who stood with me and my wife. Julie, my wife, is not here. She's with my four kids. Uh, and uh, and sh that she, we are, we, are, we are the parents of 11 kids. Uh, four of our kids are biologically us. The rest are all uh, adopted. And they're all in India, they're grown up. We just got them married. Two of them got married this year. Uh, I told them to s slow down with their grandchildren. <laughs> I don't know if they listen to me or not, but uh, it's an honor. It's an honor. But uh, you see, it's not the vision you carry. It's the commitment you carry. You didn't hear me. It's not the vision you carry. It is the commitment you carry. Commitment. Commitment. English. <laughs> Where did you get this? Commitment. Because it is the commitment, it what matters, that takes you to your goal, not your vision. Come on. You should be saying, dude, what did you say? <laughs> it is your commitment, it is your commitment that takes you to your goal, not your vision. Vision tells you, points you to exhaustion. Do you hear that? It does. Why? Your vision, I'm, I'm preaching already. <laughs> I'm supposed to bring my talk about my team. <laughs> I'll slow down. See, I've grown up as a past as a Baptist preacher, and uh, and if any Baptist, I was I studied in Bob Jones University. It's a fundamental Baptist but seminary, 
it's, uh, it's, it's called cemetery, but seminary in a way. Uh, <laughs> it's just fun, I'm sorry. But it's just, they taught me how to read, divide, rightly divide the word into, into places where significance would be reached to them. And they did it well. They did it well. It mattered. The voice, the voice, as much as the voice mattered, the word was doubled up. It is the word that shines more light on the voice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? It is the word that shines, that gives you the power over the voice. If there is no word, there is, there is paths of passionless lifestyle. It is the word that leads you to the voice. It is the word that points you to the voice. It is the word that gives you significance into the voice. And it taught me very well. But in the point, the whole point of commitment is, is leading into into your target is the commitment is a framework of building a community. It's a framework to build a community. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have com if you don't have commitment, there's no community. If you don't have community, there's no significance. It all starts with your commitment. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Because you're building with your commit, you're building a commit community with your commitment, and that commitment brings forward, brings the f unfolding things of God. Yes. Come on, yeah. you should be happy, Lindsay. <laughs> Come on, there you go. <laughs> it's the root of God. It is the presence of God. It's an attribute of God. That commitment unfolds the things of God. Because it goes after the community. It goes after to bind the community. Protect community. It is in the partnership of a commitment. Community is built. Partnership. I love Mark and Linda, their partnership with us is to not to build a ministry, is to build the nation of God into a community. Yeah. Yeah. You see, we need community, not a ministry. Come on. We grow out of community, not with the ministry. Ministry plays an important role, but the, if there is no goal for a community, ministry plays an oppression. Yes. yes. Come on. Yes. Come on. Yes. You, sh you should be writing down something. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you're up for a, a fascinating weekend. Amen. This ministry that God built. The story is going to be heard tomorrow night. A little bit of all day tomorrow. Don't miss. Don't miss this season. The season of your change. We all live of stages. We miss the stage. We got to wait for another 40 years to show up. <laughs> Daddy prepared you to feel his presence in the change that you're going to go. Because it is not your change, it is his change in you. Ah! I love it. It is not your change that makes you significant. It is his change that he wants to bring in you yes. to transform another change that needs to have change. Yes. Yes. 
Because His change is powerful in you to change something else. Come on, you show here, you reap someone else. Ah, oh, you didn't get it to me, you did not get me. I'm already preaching. I want to bring up, I'm going to make my, my, my family, my community. My community who stood strong, strong with me to build a greater nation which develops more change because of this community. Amen. Yep. Amen. And the, then they're growing. <laughs> they are growing only to love the Lord to build a community. See, building a community, I'll repeat this again. Building a community starts with the commitment. If there is no commitment, there's no building. When there's no building, we ignore. Are you ready? We ignore process. I'm going to ask Miss Joyce, my team, to stand. That's my first team member. That's my mom from a different, from a different country. And she's been a one faithful, committed person that believed in a community through us. She loved us and she's still loving us. Yeah. And we want the people, we wanted the people who were sold out to believe in a community builder. Community builder is building a community builder. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. Community builder is building a community builder. Yeah. Community builder is building a community builder. A community builder is building a community builder. <laughs> That's you. That's you. What's your name, ma'am? Uh, Vicky. 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 That's a good name, Vicky. You know what Vicky means? Do you? Victorious, right? Good. You know what dad said about you, Vicky? The root word for wiki is beautiful. Un, untradeable wiki. We cannot be traded. Your dreams cannot be traded, traded to the enemy. Your dreams are about to fulfill. Wiki? You're not alone. You're not alone in this journey. You're going to tether people like you who are more vicious for Jesus. Is that a word? Vicious. I love that word. Vicious for Jesus. They're going to go after your dreams. Stand up. Could you raise your hands? We're going to pray that this lady would be rocked by Jesus today. Daddy, bless her. Dad, let this two eyes start seeing the things that I never saw. Angels. Pictures. And I pray this voice I've been hearing would be heard. It's that very voice that changed millions would change through this child daddy. With this, with this girl, with this woman, transformation happened now. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' dad's name, amen. Amen. All right. Good. Cool. Well, thank you. Thank you, Ricky. All right.
me, me ask, me ask Jackie, Jackie, Jackie to come forward. She has been my, me and Julie's uh, little sister, and she's been the testimony of a commitment. Testimony of a commitment. Holly, Susan, where is Susan? Susan, oh, there you go. Come on, Susan. Come on. There's Jojo, um, Tiffany, John, and a few other people that who have not are not here. But this is a team with Linda and Mark going after to build a community. Could you pray for these people in your free time? And this is the dream that we have. And I want you to thank you guys. Would you yeah. give a big clap out for Jesus? <laughs> Holly, Holly, I want you to hear a testimony that she's going to share that she <laughs> will rock our faith tonight. Um, I just want to let you know, before I met Ravi, I was at a place. I had, uh, was a missionary in India for 10 years. And then God called me back to Texas. And it was a very lonely time. It was a very hard time. The waiting was very difficult. And uh, I was there 14 years. And uh, during that time, I tried to um, endure my own strength. Got into a lot of debt and gained a lot of weight and was in a lot of pain. And even though I did do ministry and I helped people, I couldn't help myself. And I just really felt abandoned by God. I was like, I'm willing to go. Or, you know, you said, I thought I'd only be here for two years. Why haven't you sent me back to India? And, um, and then I got a word from a prophet in Australia. And he said, I want you to go get some inner healing. The Lord has some things for you. I want you to be able to receive it. And Jackie, who I know from India since 2001, uh, she was my staff for the counseling school. Um, she said, oh, you need to meet Ravi, and you should, you should do some coaching with him. You'd really like it. And I just didn't want to go there because of the pain. I just, uh, but when I got this this word, I went, okay. So I called Jackie and said, yeah, I need to I need to meet with Ravi. It was February 2018. And um, uh, I had gotten inner healing before about with my weight issues and stuff. But when Ravi talked with me, it was like the Holy Spirit just healed my brain. I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel any of the pain, but um, he just healed that part of me. And so like, even since then, I've lost like 86 pounds. Haven't had to work at it. Still has, still, like, didn't have to work at it. Believe me, my whole life, every time I try to gain, I mean, lose weight, I gained. I can never do it in my own, in my own strength. And also, too, the Lord has helped me, like, um, get out of debt as well. So it's like, um, when, he, when I actually when I should go back, when I talked with Ravi, the Lord asked me to go to California, put my job, go to California. I'm like, God, California, you never said anything about that. What is that about? <laughs> I said, I'm in debt. I'm this. I'm that. How can I do this? And uh, I didn't even believe I could hear from God anymore. Before, I was very prophetic, but I just didn't think I could even hear his voice anymore. <laughs> I said, I don't even know how you can use me. And, um, but I did tell him, I tried to leave three times from the children's home to go back to India and God stopped me every time. And I said, okay, I'm going to wait. When you give me the word, I'm gone. And that's, and I took that because, uh, from California. So I, I quit my, I went and talked to my boss, everything worked out, quit and then did a seminar in June with, uh, Robbie and, and that's where God opened the door for working with the homeless in California. And um, so I work part-time with them, part-time with the homeless. And um, just seeing God's faithfulness. And um, it's been a blessing. I've, I've got other training with counseling and stuff. But with this RT Fort, I love that it helps you with your destiny. It helps you uh, with other people. And I love, uh, you know, walking people to that place. Like, um, that's why we're here. You know, we want to know what God has for us. He wants to not, not just to heal us, but he wants us to walk in our destiny, what he has for us. Yeah. And that is, that is, you know, that's why I love being in this community. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, thank you. Thank you. It's 
as much as as much as this is not about a person it is about a person who stole his heart mm. called jesus mm. he is the author of the fifth of a destiny yes. <laughs> you see what it's easy it was easy for me to be in india go after the hungry people go after hungry people win them for jesus show them the real way show them the path that they they are they are to take because they were not aware of what path they need to take because there's so many other blueprints already available in the mix of those blueprints this donkey shows up showing them a different design of a blueprint he showed them their destiny is not in the, in in reality of insignificant their destiny is in significance come on yeah if you like something i said accept it if you don't mind by raising your hands <laughs> this will tell me that you're listening to me you're not boring me i was preaching in a methodist church small little methodist church way in uh, somewhere in uh, south carolina north carolina somewhere i don't remember this i was a little tired and i didn't know what i was speaking this black lady stands up at the corner and says God help him she's he's boring <laughs> on Sunday morning service God help him he's boring that kicked me out like, you're right I'm boring now you'll get me real it was embarrassing but but here's the key what i used to do in india was not that different what i'm doing here in america in india the church planting that i used to do was a little different than a usual church planting obviously it comes with the voice it came with the voice which was a little easier to deal with are you ready to deal with what's the english word when you say i'm ready i'm searching for words also <laughs> surprises it's easy it's good it's easy for us to hear the voice to confront disruption because our disruptions is a distraction yeah. from the voice yeah. might as well hear the voice first then be disrupted <laughs> oh oh every hand should be up now it's better to hear the voice than to get to stuck in the disruption the enemy is still seeking us out the enemy loves disruption <laughs> so that i would be distracted not to get the wise first his distraction to me is a struggle but god has a different plan god has a different plan to disrupt the enemy in his way to put me in a place called significance he knows how to reach to me to allow me my significant reality my reality 
of not what I have, <laughs> of not who I am, of what I can do with him. Oh, if I close my sermon today, it's sufficient. It is not who I am that makes me difference. It is what I can do with my dad will make a difference. See, it's not about house of prayer that takes over the nation. Hallelujah. It is not the house of prayer that takes the nation. It is the house of healing that takes the nation. The house of healing clicks into destiny. Amen. Ha. Oh. Ah. oh my goodness. House of Oh, cool. I'm not against those of prayer. Please, please, please take me. No, 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 no. Prayer is important. My commitment is more important into what he wants me to do. See, without a progress, there is emptiness. Ah. Dude, Ravi, you're killing it, huh? <laughs> without a commit, without a progress, there is emptiness. Did you get that? If there is no progress, there is no solution. <coughs> because in every progress, we get to see the 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 the, the storehouse to be filled. Why? Because we honored process. Come on, guys. Yeah. Commitment, cannot, commitment cannot lead into a make, a make a community. It is my say yes to the process. My healing that gets me into my destiny. That makes the enemy insignificant <laughs> in my struggle. In my struggle. He's insignificant. Yeah. Ah, because that insignificant struggle is a glory to my God. Because because uh, uh, Holly was in, she was insignificant in anxiety. But when she felt God in that anxiety, the anxiety turned to take the how many pounds did you say? Eighty six pounds. <laughs> Away! Yeah. <laughs> because her significance of importance was my dad, her dad, to say, God, I'm ready for the process. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the notion here in all of this is, is accepting, the accepting the reality of a progress of knowing I don't have to be all to everybody. Yes, come on. Come on. Amen. I don't need to be all for everything. I hate to be around Facebook. <laughs> my, my, my wife loves the Facebook. She wants to know everybody's everything going on. She wants to be controlled by everybody's story so can she can talk to me in the night. <laughs> <laughs> that is the voice I try to avoid. God, man, come on. Take the Facebook off. She's watching you. She's watching you. Oh! Seriously. Forgive me. <laughs> but I do not know what I'm saying. I love my wife. She's the darling of darlings. I gotta say that. There's no Indian food later on. You see, the ultimate notion of the enemy is distraction. But he does not know my struggle 
is a distraction into the process. Stinker had no clue. Idiot. He's type A fella. Type A. Oh, that's my notion. I'm going there. He had no, he has no idea when my process begins, that is bringing my destiny into me. It's my language. No. <laughs> I was preaching at Seventh Day Adventist and I sprung these tongues and everybody thought, And all of a sudden someone says, oh, it's his language. Oh, thank you, Lord. Tamil Pesna Super Aircom. That's an in that's an Indian man, is it? Are you from India, sir? Bangalore! That's amazing. What's your name, sir? Sorry? Wilson. Wilson. That's a good name, Wilson. So Kanada Baratala. Sopa Sopa Sopa. Good, good, very good, very good. Don't forget your language, bro. Yeah, that's good, Wilson. I'm so happy you're here. See, it's 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 the I it's it's not about identity that we run after. It is what we say yes to to God. It builds our identity. Come on, guys. Come on. You're lost into searching for identity so much so. It becomes our oppression. Mm. Identity is saying, oh, "What is the book I don't like? I, I like I don't like this book. I don't like that book called Five Languages." Yeah. Five. Oh, oh, oh my! That book messed me up. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, I gotta be there. That's all. I gotta have what? I gotta have what? I gotta have, what? I gotta have touch, and that's my language. Oh, where is my touch? Oh, where is my touch? Where is my formation? When I did not get it, I'm going to blame that book. <laughs> it gave me a language to what I'm searching for. Dude, we are not meant to affirm. We are, we are, we are not meant to search for a form, become the formation. I love that book, by the way. <laughs> I tell everybody, don't read that. But anyways, let's <laughs> kidding. But it's beautiful because you you are you're affirming you're affirming the classic example of God. Classic example of God. Because you're agreeing to say, God, I'm ready for my process, which is my distraction to you so that I would form the glory through me to you back. Because his glory is shining back to him. You see the point? We are the sons and daughters shining back to him so that we grow in every glory that he gets through me, that I can give back to him. Yeah. See, that is the place is where worship is, is, is intertwined by actions that we take with him. You see the point? Yeah. Because every time I go to a, a, a village, that surprises me by saying, Ravi, I, most of the most of the church that that has been built, he takes me to a high caste. In a village, there are two 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 religion. There's high caste. There's a low caste. Low caste cannot touch the high caste portion. Portion anything that is owned by high caste cannot be touched by low caste because. Those are called untouchables from the day of their generations. Doesn't matter how hard they are working, doesn't matter how hard, what doesn't matter what their significance, doesn't matter their financial significance, 
Doesn't matter what they wear, doesn't matter what they say, they're born into untouchable, they will ever be untouchable forever. They're titled for insignificance. Here the donkey arrives in the village, it's easy for me to go to a low caste to preach the significance because they're already feeling insignificant. Mm -hmm. yep. It's easy. Yep. Baptists love easy jobs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but my God always astonishes me saying, Dad, Ravi, I want you to go share the gospel to a high caste first, then a low caste. And I said, Dad, they're already significant. Why would you want me to battle with, insignif with the significant? Because they are going to argue what from what they have. Critics argue usually with what they don't have. Makes sense? I love critics. I love them. I really love them. They'll show me to what to go after. Well, I, don't, I don't go. I don't go there. You know, I don't hear God. <coughs> yes, I love it. I'll go after them because they're not going after the beauty of God. It's just beautiful. It doesn't matter. Go, going into, go, that's not my message. Going into high caste. They're already significant. They're going to argue with what they already have. Call wealth. Call material things. Call knowledge. Their knowledge is their material things. Really. When knowledge is the significance, They'll, they'll only encounter how to make this knowledge to be, how to sell this knowledge in everything that they do. What are they reproducing? They're reproducing oppression. Yes. <laughs> knowledge creates oppression Amen. because it only tells you it only tells you how insignificant I am to the knowledge which I cannot even which I cannot even grab what they already have yeah. Yeah. come on but my dad has a different plan. He chooses the the unwanted, unknowledged person declaring the things different than knowledge called wisdom. It is the wisdom that changes every hungry heart it grabs the attention call it's in other words it's called revelation unless you're revealed through revelation change does not occur it's a revelation that changes us it is a revelation that moves us it is a revelation that stops us it's a revelation that makes god move to bless indeed because i was revealed through revelation did you get that? Yeah. It is a revelation that stands still, that makes God appear. Yeah. <laughs> Until you bless me, God, because I recognize you as an angel, revelation, I'm not going to go. Amen. <laughs> my revelation became a position. See, I'm lo looking at locking myself into a high caste and saying, Dad, this is not the way I should be teaching. That is the way I'm teaching. My teaching is low caste, not my, not my adversaries. Yeah. Is that a word? Adversaries. Adversaries. Enemies? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, yeah. Other word for it. 
adversaries. <laughs> Good English. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So here I'm teaching, here I'm going. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> here after I'm going, here I'm going with uh, preaching the gospel to high caste, and high caste all of a sudden they recognize this dude carries something. They carry something that we don't have. What is the significance he has that I don't carry? Because their knowledge depreciates with wisdom. Daddy's wisdom makes every knowledge depreciate its value. Isn't that good English? Yeah. <laughs> it depreciates the value of the wisdom that God gives. That's why the unwanted, the unwanted man called Solomon earned 700 nations without going after a war. 700 nations. 700 nations without a war. Can you imagine that? In the years he lived, there was no king who earned a nation without a war. Without going for a war field. Warfare field. This dude stood in the chair, sat royally, won nations. He depreciated the knowledge of the world. <laughs> that is who... He's living in you. Yes. Yes. Who is ready to depreciate the knowledge of the world. Yes. Yes. Through your wisdom. Yes. Through your positioning. Saying my significance, my insignificance is my, <laughs> is my cry for wisdom. Yes. Oh, I'm coming to a place guys. I'm, I'm, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming to a point here. When I'm preaching to the, to the high caste, because my dad was a priest, high priest, and, and obviously that, uh, that, that shlokas and that, that, that mantra, is all the, my dad was a high priest, so I carry his legacy, and I, I'm easily tackled into what I need to know, and people get to know because my, my hereditary comes from Kshatriyas. Lingayatism. Lingayatism is a religion. Which is, which is, which used to be about Brahmins. Brahmin? Brahmin is a community, high caste community. So in me teaching, me, me recognize it because they want to connect to something. They, they are, your knowledge is always evaluating what works or not. <laughs> you see this dude, is he, is he, is he, what is he? You know, we always evaluate to experiences of us. So when the experiences takes no place and the wisdom is screaming out our hearts and saying, this, what you're hearing is different. It's, it's, it's about to hit me. It's about to change me. I better listen to what I'm saying. I'm, I'd rather listen to what I'm seeing. Change is about to hit me. That's all? <laughs> Who wants to see that change happen today? Come on. That's where my dad is today. He descended for this day. No, he didn't hear me. He descended for this day. He came to this earth for this day. He died for this day. He shed for this day yes. where oppression is no more, is no more my distraction. Mm. <laughs> I teach this gospel to this ice cast and all of a sudden these ice cast just, 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 just know that this, this guy is thinking a little different uh, and, and, and accepting this, this amazing God who has a blueprint showing them a destiny that they never thought they could have. And, and destiny is pouring out from their father the, to the father, to the son, to the daughter. Uh, the, the disease are relieving, relieving, and, and, and uh, relieving Jesus. <laughs> relieving Jesus. When, when disease relieve Jesus, what do you think will happen? <laughs> Life will happen. Yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. 
the sea is really leaving that means it's 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 it's, it's taking away it's all of the fun that was stopped by the disease now going back to say i give you permission have fun i'm sorry i i've been oppressed i'm bowing down to the one who visited you And all of a sudden, these which with this high caste don't know what to do with this donkey, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, by in this coming few weeks, I have another job by greater God who says, take these high caste, go to a low caste, go to a neighbors of a low caste, let the high caste wash their legs. Wow. Dude. <laughs> Why? <laughs> why this is the most difficult thing to do to preach the god to a known significant people and you win their hearts and they're going to ruin me then you're going to ruin me by saying this because they think i already have an agenda which i didn't you see the point yeah, yeah. that's where god is god ravi is ravi <laughs> because every step is counted for his glory yeah. and all of a sudden he says do this i'm going to give you the process yeah come on ah oh, because the process builds the community Amen. remember that yeah. Yeah. so i'm building the community with the process and all of a sudden they are saying <laughs> yes i want to serve the lord has not by social work by cleaning their feet Lingaitism is all of a sudden like I, I see them. I see them as a human beings. Come on. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. I see them human beings. I never saw them as human beings before. Now I see them. They 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 beyond beyond purposeful because he, because this destiny that you has given to me is 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 I don't know what happened to my eyes. I don't know what happened to my son. I don't know what happened to my dogs. Look, I don't know what happened to me. I'm worshiping. I'm worshiping. I'm worshiping. I'm worshiping. I am worshiping Jesus through washing the lights. Here I am taken off by saying, God, whoa, this must be a celebration in heaven because a nation divided is the enemy's Oh, yes. 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 Folding up nations is God's work because revolution begins with the transformation of your mind. And all of a sudden, these people get saved, and and and, and these Washington people, the the, the, the locals have no idea why is this uh, lingaites are coming down to 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 worship to, to just worship me, and they are worshiping me. Why? It gives, and I and these guys tell them because I'm not there. Ravi disappears. Ravi is never shown there in one of the villages. and this guy all of a sudden daddy tells them something the high caste will go all of a sudden to these villages and say i want to wash your leg i know i know why i'm doing this may i wash your legs mm. ravi is in there mm. to explain why why because what has been saved needs to be transformed through explanation yeah. if you don't know how to explain it it's not testimony amen It isn't a testimony. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a religion. Yeah. When you do, when it's not taught, that's freedom. Yeah. Mm. Wow. No, I didn't get it. <laughs> buy the CD if you don't mind. I'm going to buy it too. <laughs> Yeah. All 
a sudden these people don't know have an idea. They says, why? Why am I so significant in the eyes of significant people? And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, this, this, this daddy never ends there. Dad would never end there. Dad, dad, my dad, your dad, is a <laughs> stinky God. I call him as Jehovah Stinker. <laughs> and he comes down and he says, Ravi, I want you to raise up a pastor from a low caste to be a pastor for a high caste. Wow. <laughs> 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 Washing leg is easy. <laughs> to be pastor for a high caste? Who, the low caste? Dude, that is the hardest thing. That was the hardest thing for me. It took all of this, all of this has to happen in three months. Can you imagine that? Church planting, that, that dude up inside you is crazy. Three months. In three months, all of this has to happen because you're touching a little bit of group, little bit of a group of high, high caste, going after low caste and saying, this you are, my, my pastor said, some donkey said that you are going to be my pastor. And this guy is like, buddhi. Buddhi means owner. I, I don't know what I why? I don't know why. I, 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 I can never be a pastor. I can never be a leader. Why would I be a leader? I know I no one taught me how to be a leader, sir. Please, please take me back to where I came from. It takes an, it takes three months for me. For these these people, it takes a few weeks, a week, a day. To transform an untouchable it takes, it takes three months to transform a pastor into his destiny. Why? Why? He is, I, he is replacing emotions, behavior, memories, and learning new spiritual authority. He's relearning these four things. He's learning new things of what his emotions do. What does behavior do? What memory should I, should I look into? What spiritual authority I got to earn? That earning is my gaining. Learning is my gaining. The more I learn is my gaining. Dad, thank you so much. This guy falls in love with God so much so that he has no idea. He, has, which, he had no idea what leadership is. Now he's all of a sudden someone else destiny because he was proven into his destiny yeah. 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 here I am in the United States I thought that was it. that was church planting you know what dad said he says come go go to the United States take the same model and he says that that is inner healing which I don't believe in. I don't believe in inner healing, God. This is, you're right. It's not about inner healing. It's about emotional healing. When you recognize your emotions is not your boss. You create your thoughts. Say that again, sir. I forgot. <laughs> Come on. Emotions are. Uh... Help him, guys. Help him. Shut the emotions down. Emotions not a boss. Good. It what? Your emotions creates a thought. Heal the emotions. Creates the thoughts. You have the authority when you disqualify emotions. That's right. You become an entrepreneur all of a sudden. Entrepreneur? You are an entrepreneur, sir. You are. Please know that. Creativity was born into you. It started into you when you were in the womb of your mother. Please know that. 
Erin was not happy with you and still not happy with you. He's still not happy with you while you're here. He's going to wreck you. My dad is going to wreck you. <laughs> You have no choice, sir. <laughs> creativity, will, creativity will spring, whether you like it or not. Because your emotions is no more your master. Because emotions comes from our learning of what our four, forefathers have come to. And the parents unknowingly unexpectedly un what's the word I'm looking into without knowing they put it because what they learned is what they get yeah. 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 it's not their fault yeah. Yeah. they don't know the other way yeah. and here I come to America and all of a sudden I'm talking to I'm talking to Holly I'm talking to all these people and saying and saying this is what dad said this is what dad said I want you to leave New York, go to the other part of Atlanta. And he says, why should I? Why should I leave Atlanta? Holly says, what? You want to go to where? I said, go, dad told you to go to CA, California? Yeah. Dad told me to tell you to go to California. He says, which God did you hear? <laughs> <laughs> she, was the, she was the worst. I ever had. <laughs> she was a true, I don't know. I had to battle her. God, why? But when she stood, said, you know what? Yes, I'm sick. I'm sick of this stuck place. When you're not sick of where, where you are, you will not go to where is God's calling you to. You need to be sick enough to be controlled by your emotions, your behaviors, your memories. That's when your God says, you know what? You're whole. You're insignificant. It's a blessing to ten thousands. Mm -hmm. You, what you have, is five bread, two fish. Yeah. That is the completion to ten thousand. It is not in your demand what people are looking for. Because in sick, when people search you for, you become a demand. Insignificant is a demand on a needy generation. Did you hear that? No, you didn't hear me. Did you hear that, sir? What did I say? Insignificant is a demand on a needy nation. Did you hear that, sir? Did you hear that? I heard it. Explain me. Explain it. I was just going to say the same thing to you. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> That dude was the most difficult person too. I don't know who you married to. He's an amazing man. You married a good man. Please no. He's gonna take this place in a surprise. He runs on dad's energy. Is a good, what's the car you guys run? 
Prius. Prius. <laughs> <laughs> you are charged, sir. What did I say? I'm charged? No, what did I say? Well, before? Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> Is a demand to a needy nation. Isn't that true? When you're feeling insignificant, you know there's a demand on you. You become less restless. Do you hear that? I know, I know. Our brains are working out. <laughs> what did he say? True. I get to do that every morning. What did you say? What significance? <laughs> when dad speaks, it is blows your mind. It blows me every day. I believe it will blow you every day. Every day, dad is going to blow you, but just through, just through that little inch called revelation. You see? In other words, but that insignificance, that demand, which is making me restless, stressful, is an invitation to feed 10,000. Come on, amen. Come on. Come on. Ah, I don't know. <laughs> it is that your insignificant, your restless heart. Why? How? Who? Why do I need to be responsible to this unexampled person? Why do I need to be responsible for a marriage that was lost? Why do I need to be burdenful for that person who did not take my call? Yeah. <laughs> right? right? We we take the undue undue stress on us to be a demand for someone else. Mm -hmm. Guys, listen up. Dad is turning that wheels when those two little, two little kids came up to Jesus and said, this is what we have. And that seven was a whole to 10,000 means that was more than enough. You are a demand. You are a demand. Because daddy trusts you to release freedom in a person who did not receive your call because you are creating a pathway for Jesus. Yeah. They're not going to listen to you. They're not going to they're gonna accept, accept your leadership. Who cares? I'm going to send my nightmare of God into them. God's nightmare is different than my nightmares. My, night, my nightmare is donkey talking to me. Do you hear that? My nightmare is people talking with freedom. Come on. Come on. Guys, that is ready today. The minister that is going to begin today is running a community to fall in love with the destiny of Jesus in their lives. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. This is not a house of prayer. This is not a ministry. This is a house of healing Amen. into destiny. Come on. Amen. There's so many things that's going to happen in this community. He chose this place for a reason. People like my brother, people like you are joining hands to take over this part of this part of the state. Amen. To reproduce the glory back to the glory. Yes. Yes. Come on. I have so much to say. So much to say. I have no time. <laughs> my, my sisters are saying, let's leave it for tomorrow. There's more tomorrow. There's more tomorrow. Please don't miss. This is for you. Yes. He chose 
did not choose New York, did not choose Chicago, did not choose Florida. Yeah. That's coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's coming because you want to plant the reputation to them. Yeah. You're going to plant a design. That's right. Did you hear that? Yeah. You're going to plant a design here. Yes. A design. Uh, yes. <laughs> you. You. In that seven, he fed 10,000. Through you, he's going to feed hundreds and millions. Through you. That seven, insignificant amount, fed 10,000. Would you be willing to give your life to the little call I want to impact? Would you be? <laughs> Would you be willing to give your life to impact? To, Im to impact? Would you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Come on. No, no, you are no, no less than Mother Teresa. Amen. That's all, that's all dad needs? Your yes? He will bring the high caste to, them, to their feet to go bless the low caste. You're the donkey for dad. Amen. <laughs> There's so many people here who are ready to create the design for this nation. Let's start it. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Let's repeat freedom in a greater level. Yeah. See, your discipline will give you confidence. Your discipline will give you confidence. Your discipline will restore the community. We'll talk more tomorrow. Who wants to be tonight? Get out of the worship. Here's something I want to invite you for. You can close your books. And I know it's, uh, I'm going to take only one minute, if you don't mind. This is true, true, this is true. I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> Maybe I'll stand for that. <laughs> Can somebody in the back tell me what you're taking today? What are you taking today? What did God talk to you today? Could you shout for me?
dad is ready today to put you to a spot where you would be significant in the place of insignificant for that people who don't recognize their full solution my dad is ready today my dad is ready my dad is ready to take what you have and multiply the joy in that place take what you have and reveal his power in your regrets in your regrets there is joy hiding hallelujah in your regrets there is joy hiding if you take that tag that to facebook facebook will blow i off <laughs> what all that book what all that tweaker tweak tweak <laughs> is it tweak oh tweak <laughs> sorry <laughs> tweet okay guys listen up this is your day this is your day what linda and mark sacrificed would be the foundation for community where nations is going to rejoice from today because you're going to build you're going to build a blueprint for jesus your blueprint would be a station to build another blueprint we all need motivators could you be the motivators for this nation anybody who wants to be the motivators all i want you to do is close your eyes i'm going to ask my team to come up linda mark joyce Every eye is closed. The God who worked in India. The God is working, the God who is working here to reveal his radical touch in the insignificant heart and saying, God, I'm not sufficient. If you feel that, if you feel that tonight, you're the right candidate. to bring solution to bring fulfillment to this nation i want you i want to i'll repeat this again if you are saying to to your heart saying where is this coming from what are, what, what am i blocking what what's what's stumbling me what's stumbling me what is what is what are these words what is this language what are these pictures what is this true is this can this happen please know that's tagging to jesus all those questions tag them to jesus tag them tag them tag them tag them to jesus take all that roots of thoughts and tag them to jesus look at the every regrets that you've been through tag them to jesus that is insignificant dad but but you called me to be sufficient now dad is calling you now calling you out he's calling you out to be significant seven is your number seven is your number full you are fully fully taken over fully things full things full things that have supposed to happen is happening right now as i speak to you dad is going into your amygdala going dad is going to your hippocampus of your brain dad is going to your your chambers of your brain and letting know that he is famous there he is going to be the owner in um, your amygdala 
He is the owner to your hippocampus. He is the owner to your prefrontal cortex. That is ready now. You are no more under the oppression of what of the insignificant of your regret. Bring that to Jesus. Bring bring that to Jesus. Bring that to Jesus. You're significant, insignificant. Bring that to Jesus. Dad, what would what would you do with this five five loaf of bread and two fish? How would you do it? Why would you do it? That's not the question that you need to ask. The question is, let me run to Jesus. Let me let me give him what I have now. If you are that person wanting to take that risk say I'm going after now I'm going I'm going to go now I'm going to go now daddy if you are that person guys put your feet to this altar I know this altar is very small come on come on up a chair you're the symbol of you leaving your chair symbol of leave this is not altar call or any any baptist preaching that I'm preaching I'm not preaching something good I'm not here to preach the feel good sermon today and and the same guy coming from India same guy same guy I've not changed same guy with the same heart same life in my mistakes He's chosen me to be his son. He's chosen me to be his son. I'm no more a servant to my emotions. He changed me. I mean, he can change me. He's willing to change you today. Dad, come. you come listen to this all this closed eyes daddy listen to this tagging sound tagging sound <laughs> this tagging sound of their regrets to you listen to them would you please listen 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 daddy listen could you please listen to the tags that they're tagging their regrets the failures and they've brought that to you now would you make them whole now would you please please daddy daddy please we are here bringing up insignificant with less of me with less of me i'm here to make a mark i'm ready my and would you please everybody take your right hand put it on your head say this out loud to me in your head, you say this to anything that you want to be comes after a decision agreed i don't know what i said but i said good things <laughs> your decision is is what going to take the move of god your decision daddy say it out daddy, daddy. This, is me. this is me accept me now god <laughs> in my insignificant i want to be whole take this insignificant i want to join impacting community thank you for accepting me in jesus daddy's name in jesus daddy's name amen could you give a big clap up to jesus
little bacteria and we have a stay up here. <coughs> God did something significant, very significant in each one of you, just like he did in Ravi and just like he did in me. God has for us. God won't let us stay comfortable. How many here have felt that something doesn't feel right? Something, yeah, put your... as being done against us? Well, that's not fair. Well, that's this. Why is that happening? He allows that in our life to shake our nest. Because we need our nest shaken. We need our comfortability shaken because God wants this nation. God wants this community and he's going to use you. That's why you're here. Something drew you here because God said it's time. It's time. And he already did it. He began it right here. And you'll hear more. That's what the RT4 Center House of Healing is going to be about. It's about bringing healing to our behaviors and our emotions and our memories that have kept us stuck from walking in the fullness that he has for us. And the fun thing about that is when we just say yes, the floodgates open. This, this space, Daddy said, I want this in a barn. And you'll hear this on Saturday night. And he connects. He connects people. He connected us with Sarah and Brian. And they then said, yes, I, we heard God say the same thing. Daryl, wait, raise your hand. Daryl had already felt connected. And he had already donated most of this sound equipment. But he goes, I know God's doing something. He donated the rest of it. And then he said, this is our sneaky God. Then he said, Daryl said, do you, do you think you need curtains? And I said, curtains? Because this barn, if you've looked on our webpage, open up the back, the back. This is what the barn looked like how many months ago? And Daryl said, do you need curtains? And I went, curtains? You've got curtains for this 100 foot by 40 foot barn. He goes, yeah, I do. I'm like, you're kidding me. He goes, no, and I think I have enough to cover it all because we were just going to do this at first. I'm like, you're... God, so you, I don't even know what the story was, is how you got them, but they were in bins. 20 bucks. 20 bucks. 20 bucks. <laughs> You're going to want to be a part. When, when Robbie had uh, my coaching, when I had coaching with Robbie, he said, and I wasn't looking I was just, I was feeling, I was feeling a stirring. I was very, very happy where I was. I loved the community he had me in. You guys, a lot of you are from that. You know that. I was happy. But he shook my nest and said, Robbie said, a year from now. And he didn't know what, we didn't know yet what God was going to do. He was just speaking what the Lord said. And you'll hear more of that. He said, a year from now, which was September 1, I put it on a dream board. A revolution must happen. That was on 9-1-18. And you're a part of that. You're a part of that. Before um, I'm going to have Sherry talk, what we're, we're going to be equipping, training. We're going to have worship um, nights here doing this, celebrating the King of Kings and giving thanks to the King of Kings. But if you were a part already, of making this happen. Would you just stand so I can give you, so Mark and I can give you our thanks, that Robbie can give you our thanks. If you've been a part of cleaning chairs or cleaning carpets or hanging curtains, because I know there's people that are to stand up. I want to give you thanks. Daryl, thank you. Cindy, thank you. Mara, thank you. Beth, thank you. Thank you, Kyle and Suzette. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Betts, <laughs> if you want, before you leave to 
tonight. If you're not going to be back and you're going to watch the rest, if you want, the cottage is open. That cottage was filled with stuff. Filled. And the Lord gave us access to this early, but we weren't going to have access. We didn't know when we were going to get access to be able to get in there and clean. And we were here at a worship night, and I walked out there, and I texted her, because and it was, it was empty. And I'm like, oh my goodness, Bats, it's empty. And she responded back and texted me and said, can my daughter and I give you a love offering? And can we go in there and clean it? Thank you. There's testimony upon testimony upon testimony that this is the Lord's. And he's calling us all. He's calling us all. It's time. The enemy's had this nation long enough, and it's time to take it back. For those of you that don't know, I'm Sherry. I'm a pastor here in Elko Newmarket, and Linda and I, we have been prayer partners, friends, for a long time. We get together regularly and pray. Um, Linda, many, many years ago, I mean, she touched my heart in such a a huge way. Um, My team and I, like, it was 2007. We came in here and we cleaned out this barn. Many of you know Dave and Peggy. They owned this place. Dave did at that point in time, and this was filled. You talk about that house being filled. This was filled. And we just it was in October and and I got sick you guys I got h1n1 and it just took me down and I I called Linda and I'm, I'm like Linda please I mean there were hundreds of people here that night hundreds of people I'm like Linda can you take over And Linda's like, I'm on it. I am so on it. And so as I'm laying in bed and I'm praying, she's sending me pictures. And I'm like, oh, yay. I'm so sad I'm not there. But she began ministering and sewing into what was going on right here, what God was doing right here. And I'm just so honored and so blessed and so proud of you for just following Jesus and, and saying yes, every little insignificant step along the way You said yes. And y'all, isn't this amazing? Weren't you just touched tonight? And don't you want more? Oh, I want more. (laughs) I don't want it to end this weekend. I want it to go on and on and on. I mean, Linda and I have been up to Pete's Hill. Has anybody been there? It's not far from here. Just praying over this entire area. We want to see this entire area overcome by what God is doing. He's doing something so beautiful. And you guys, you get to be a part of it. You get to be a part of it. It's so cool. God is inviting you to be a part of it. Tonight, you know what? We're going to take up an offering because, you know, there's just the practical side of ministry. There just is. Um, I'd like to say that it just kind of happens. Oh my gosh, money falls from the sky. And I... I've never seen that happen (laughs) because God loves you. He loves you. He's blessing you so that you can be a part of the blessing. Isn't he so beautiful? I just love that he does that. And so we are going to take up an offering tonight to sow into this ministry, to say, yes, 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 daddy. Yes, Papa. I want to be a part of what you're doing here. And I want to be a part of what you're doing beyond. Because I think for many of you, this is just the launching point. Come on. You're starting right here, but it's going to go beyond, way beyond this place. So if you would, let's just pray before we take up our offering, okay? Jesus, you know what? You have blessed us all so richly. <laughs> I just look and I think each one of us has a pillow to lay our head on. And each one of us has breakfast in the morning and supper at night. And you have just blessed us so richly. Each one of us came here with shoes on our feet. And Father, we're just so grateful. We are so grateful. For some of you, I 
feel like, maybe you're feeling like the, the woman that came to Jesus and, and she begged Jesus for a miracle for her daughter. And Jesus like ignored her. It was just weird. I mean, he just kind of ignored her. And she kept talking though, Jesus, I know you can hear me. And the disciples said, send her away. And Jesus said, hey, she's valuable. He said, I'm, I came for a purpose. And she said, but, but even, even the dogs get the scraps. And you know what, you guys, even with the tiny little scrap, this is the amazing thing, even with the tiny little scrap that fell from the table, Jesus did a huge miracle of setting her daughter free. So even if it's just a tiny little scrap, do you know what? Jesus is gonna do a huge miracle with it. He just loves you. And he loves the people beyond here. And he wants you to be a part of it. So Jesus, we just bring to you, we bring to you our tiny little scraps and we bring to you from our bountiful blessings. We bring to you, God, as you lay it on our hearts. We wanna bless this ministry and we wanna bless what you are doing. We just wanna be a part, God. So take what we bring tonight. Use it for your glory. Use it for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. While she's passing the basket, I'll just talk about this a little bit. While she's passing the basket, if you, um, if this is the last night that you're able to come, because I know that we've got busy schedules, you can, you can go back onto our website, which is um, Radical Transformation for House of Healing, Minnesota on Facebook and we'll, we'll be Facebook living all of the sessions so if you want to do that um, we do have as of today a live website and so it is um, Scott Cow S-C-O-T or Co Scott County KingdomFoundations.org we're going to be having classes here starting in October if you want to see that healing of your emotions there's a class called Passion for Life Revived it's amazing. We have done this class once already. Who has taken Passion for Life Revived? Yeah. How would you recommend it? Was it good? Yeah. That's for healing of emotions. We're also going to do a trust repair class starting in October. And that's for healings of behaviors. There's things that God wants to do in us to, 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 so that we can walk in the truth. Because there's just there's patterns that we get stuck in that keep us from believing. So God brings the healing and then, he, and then he brings us into our destiny and our purpose. So you can find those um, on, the, on that or if you've got the yellow, the yellow um, brochure that we had, make sure you take one of that because it just, it gives you Mark's and my story a little bit. It gives you the classes that we're doing um, and it just gives you all that information. So thank you for coming. Go ahead and pass the baskets around. And we just appreciate all that you're going to do. And we, we hope that you come back. Yep. Checks. Uh, checks to Kingdom Foundations. Right? Checks can be made payable to Kingdom Foundations. And all of your donations tonight stay right here in Minnesota and helping, helping us do what God's called us to do here just by paying the bills. We've got some, and we will, like I said, I'm gonna open up the cottage so you can go out there and see. There's just a little bit of things we need to do, but we're gonna be doing the smaller class. If it's classes, if it's 25 people and under, we'll do it in the cottage because it's it's expensive to heat the barn. But if it's if it's bigger, we'll heat the barn. We'll, do, we'll heat this up because God's gonna provide because this is his. So um, we will start again tomorrow. The doors will open at nine o'clock. We'll, we'll do worship about 9.30. Sherry, um, uh, her church is in Firefly Coffee, which is Elko Newmarket, and she's going to bless us with her coffee. And we've got some muffins and some things for you um, at noon. So we'll have some, some teachings. And then at noon, we have prophetic stations from 12 until 2 that we will be hosting here. And then we'll also, like I said, have pizza. So um, I'll, get a, I'll walk from here and get something where you can sign up. If you know you're going to be there, that would be helpful for us. So, yes, Bob. Uh, if we've got a prayer assignment for Scott County coming up, and if uh, it's in Shakopee at the historic uh, Methodist Episcopal Church, uh, and I can, it's an amazing story how it all come together. If, if that's something that's on somebody's heart, I'll be in the back. You can yeah. So a prayer opportunity for Scott County, for, for, yeah, Scott for, County for Scott area. County area. Oh, yeah. So go talk to Bob. 
He's doing something, not just in, with us, but all over. But here's where you are. Here's where he's got you planted. We want you to see you sow in. So there's more information back there. Um, so thank you for coming. I hope we'll see you again tomorrow. And be blessed. And um, you know what? I think, Susan, can I have you in the, can, some, can I have a couple of team members be over at the cottage?